sir. Uh, this evening we have uh, Jim Merrifield, uh, who has some letters after his name, and that's what he's going to talk about tonight, so I'm going to let him explain those. But uh, he is the Director of Information Governance, that's a hint, uh, for File Trail Incorporated, and he is the founder of the Information Governance Conference, so there's an even better hint to one of the letters. And uh, Jim is going to speak to us about career paths for the next generation uh, records manager. And I'm going to turn this right over to Jim so we can get started. Okay, thanks so much, Pat, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, so Pat gave a quick introduction. I'm not going to spend too much time on this slide because I know I have a, an hour of your time. Uh, but yeah, I'm the Director of Information Governance at FileTrail. What that means is I assist uh, global organizations on how to build information governance strategies and keep them up to speed with the latest technologies to manage information better. Um, Co-founder of Information Governance Conference. It, it was actually the inaugural year this year uh, in Hartford in September. Pat was there, gave a wonderful presentation. Uh, we'll be continuing to um, do this conference each and every year um, in Hartford, um, in Connecticut. We had uh, over 200 uh, this year. I'm also involved with ARMA, being their immediate past president. Um, I co-authored the ARMA IGP prep and also an AIM education partner. And we'll get into some of those uh, certificate courses as we go along. So here's the million dollar question. Which certification should I choose? There's so many of them out there. And I, I like this quote from Jeff uh, Whithead from, uh, from ARMA International. Uh, certifications can definitely establish credibility, but the challenge is choosing the most relevant ones from among the most available can be uh, quite a challenge. And I think the next slide illustrates that. It's really what I call the, and, and ARM has actually used this term, the alphabet soup. And that's really what's out there right now. It's making it so difficult to distinguish uh, one from the other, a certificate from a certification. And, and yes, there is a difference. But before we talk about some of those uh, acronyms that you see um, on the slide, let's focus on what a certificate and certification are and how they are different. So really, what's the difference between these two? Um, really, this is a quick comparison chart with a certificate. Um, really, for, for newcomers or experienced professionals, usually there's education programs behind it, such as uh, AIM International or, or ARMA. And usually you can listen on your resume with, with no letters. And it demonstrates knowledge of a, of a course content at the, at the end of a set period of time. Now, certifications, on the other hand, are much more involved. Most require a pre-approval process. There is minimum requirements that must be met in order to be approved to sit for the certification examination, usually some education to go along with it, usually complete an application, provide required documentation, and then you ultimately pay a fee. That's not to say that certificates don't cost money, but usually um, certifications cost much more. And, and usually the submission gets reviewed by a standards committee who then informs you that you're eligible or ineligible to sit for the certification exam. So. The, the thought behind certifications that is that they're much more difficult to achieve and usually require additional financial investments and substantial uh, preparation time. And there's also um, ongoing requirements for uh, CEUs as well. So here's the, the certifications we're going to talk about today. I thought these were most relevant to uh, the MARA program, the, the ICRM, 
uh, from the Institute of Certified Records Managers, the uh, PMI, Project Management Institute, uh, CIP from AIM International, and the CIPP from IAPP. And uh, last but not least, uh, the newest one is the IGP from ARMA International, the Information Governance Professional. So this is not the end all of certifications, but, but again, it's the ones that I felt was uh, most beneficial for this audience. So the, the first one we're going to discuss is the Certified Information Professional from, from AIM International. So it, it's based and developed in accordance with the ISO standard 17024, um, which ensures conformity to accepted procedures for individual certification. So it is an ISO standard certification, uh, which uh, gives a level of, of standard for, for these types of certifications. Um, it, it, what it does is demonstrate your ability to bridge IT and business. And, and to me, that's important, especially for records managers today, because usually uh, records managers are weak in the technology uh, fields. They're, they're weak in those skills. So this, the, the certified information professional will help you uh, keep your information management skills current and competitive and also keep up with, with the times, and which is why you saw the CIP after my name. I felt it was, it was important. So what's actually involved in the exam? So we're going to actually discuss uh, this certification and, and how it tests your knowledge in the following six domains. So first, access and use. What that's going to talk about is things like Enterprise search, business intelligence, master data management, text analytics. The capture and manage domain is going to talk about things like information capture, business process management, knowledge management, email management, and content management. Collaborate and deliver is going to talk, talk about things like social media, the information workplace, how people are talking about talking and collaborating and so many different mediums such as instant messaging, telecommuting support, web conferencing, you know, things like we're doing today with this, this broadcast, this is a, a web conference. Uh, then there's secure and preserve, which is the, the fourth domain, which is going to talk about things like security, records management, data privacy, digital rights management, archiving, and, and e-discovery. And then architecture and systems is going to talk about information architectural, technical architecture, cloud computing, mobile applications, and website and portal. So it's going to get a little IT geeky, so to speak, um, but it's a good test of your knowledge. And it's really a high-level over overview of these domains. And then finally, plan and implement. It's going to talk about topics like strategic planning, uh, building a business case, uh, for solution design, implementation planning, requirements, definition, solution design, and change management, which are, are skills that you're going to need no matter, um, you know, what you're going to do in your career. For me, uh, the CIP has helped me as a, as a solution provider to be able to talk effectively with um, CIOs at client sites. So now we've discussed, you know, what a CIP certification is, what the domains are, so the eligibility requirements. So there's no mandatory requirements at all, which means all of you on this call or on this presentation are eligible. So AIM, but AIM recommends candidates have a minimum of three years experience um, increasing in responsibility in one of those uh, topical areas uh, listed there, library science, information technology, and, and then one more experience as well. And I would think that uh, if you're enrolled in the MARA program, you, you definitely meet those requirements, and, and, and Pat can correct me if, if I'm wrong. And, and it's not necessary to, to be a member of AIM. So again, anybody can take this, this exam. So about the test, we talked about the domains, the eligibility. It costs 265 bucks. 
um, USD. Um, if anybody, I will add to that, if anybody's interested in taking this exam, being a, a CIP, I can give you a discount code. I think it's about 20% from AIM. Um, so let me know. Um, you'll have, you know, two hours to take the exam. It's 100 multiple choice. There's no uh, essays. Uh, you have to score a 70, and uh, you'll receive your, your score report in about uh, a month. So it's pretty straightforward. Now, there is maintenance uh, to go along with this certification. Uh, you have to recertify every three years. Um, one of the two methods, you can either just uh, not do any CEUs uh, throughout the three years, which uh, why would you want to do that? But um, or you can take the test and submit 45 uh, continuing education credits over a three-year period. And the reason why you would do that is if you submit the 45 CEUs, your exam is free. If you do not uh, submit 45 CEUs over that three-year period, you will have to uh, pay for the exam every three years. And the reason why I think this is great that AIM requires you to retest every three years because technology changes uh, so much, and it and the test will change, and the credit, you know, the the study uh, materials will change. I, I see that there's a question uh, from Rebecca: How do we study for the test? Um, the AIM site actually has a ebook that is very helpful. Uh, I think it's free to AIM members, but um, I can also uh, contact you offline and and send you a couple links that will help you to study for the exam uh, if, if Pat will share your uh, contacts with me. Uh, I'd be glad to help you. So we've talked about the CIP. Uh, now we're going to talk about uh, CIA. It's a Certified Document Imaging Architects. Now, CompTIA has been around for a long time. Uh, what it is, for those of you who are not familiar with it, it's an internationally recognized credential acknowledging competency, co competency and professionalism in the document imaging and records management industry. So with records management um, used to be focused on primarily paper, it's, it's moving towards uh, imaging and scanning electronic data. So this certification can definitely uh, help you uh, possess the critical knowledge of, of all the major areas of technology used to plan, uh, design, and specify an enterprise content management system, which all of you, I'm sure, work work in each and every day. So here's the domains. There's five domains that are going to test your your knowledge, and first is is ECM, and what the ECM domain is going to explain the proper uses of, of an index, what an index is, um, what search is, what retrieval is. It's going to explain the functions used uh, in a workflow pattern. Uh, it's going to explain how to use collaborative capabilities. It's going to compare and contrast document presentation and output features. And it's going to explain the purpose of content life cycles. Um, so a, a really, again, a high-level overview of, uh, of an, an ECM. Um, capture is going to talk about selecting the appropriate input sources and methods, for example, uh, mobile, fax, barcode, uh, RFID. It's also going to talk about implementing document scanning technologies and processes. It's going to differentiate recognition methodologies and technologies. Uh, it's going to explain the purpose of metadata and file properties. Uh, storage and networking is going to focus on things like various storage medium types and associated properties. Um, it's going to compare and contrast various storage strategies such as um, online, offline, on-site, off-site, uh, things like that. It's going to explain the basics of network connectivity and hardware solutions. So you're not going to have to be an IT um, geek, so to speak, um, but you're going to have to understand high-level um, network connectivity and hardware uh, solutions. 
Security and compliance is going to explain the basics of, of records management. Um, I don't think anybody on this call is going to have a problem with that. Um, it's going to explain the different access security methods, uh, various elements of network security, um, how to implement appropriate document and information security, which is a hot topic today. We know information security, and we'll talk about that a little later in the CIPP certification. And then finally, uh, analysis, design, and implementation. It's going to talk about things like uh, the basics of project management, uh, how to execute an appropriate requirement gathering techniques, uh, how to analyze and collect data and validate client requirements, uh, how to structure a solution design according to specified requirements, and apply implementation and testing uh, procedures. And again, a lot of this information is on uh, the websites at the end of the slides, um, at the last slide. So what's the eligibility requirements? Again, there are no eligibility requirements for this exam at all. Um, same as the uh, CIP, but it's recommended that you have at least two years of relevant work experience. And about the test, <clears throat> it recommends that you have about two years of on-the-job experience in, you know, scanning or dealing with networks. Um, the exam is about 100 questions. You're allowed 90 minutes. Passing score is 700 or 70, and the cost is uh, 293, roughly 300 bucks. Now, maintenance, there's no maintenance required uh, for this CDIA plus imaging certification. And again, I'm moving quickly through these certification slides because of time. But if you have any questions, feel free to uh, to ask me offline. Um, so the next certification we're going to talk about is a CIPP. Um, it is it was founded by the IAPP or the International Association of Privacy Professionals, and the IAPP is the largest and most comprehensive global information privacy community and resource. Uh, it was founded in 2000. And the IAPP is a non-for-profit that helps to find, support, and improve privacy, the privacy profession globally. And they're definitely busy uh, in today's times. So when you earn a CIPP credential, we're going to focus on the U.S. Uh, credential. There is also five options uh, with Canada, Europe, and, and the U.S. government. Um, and I think there's an IT one that I didn't add on the slide. Um, so let's talk about a couple of those of these domains. So there's five domains. Um, an introduction to U.S. privacy environment. It's going to talk about the structure of U.S. law. Um, again, you don't have to be a lawyer to to take this exam. Um, it's going to talk about enforcement of U.S. privacy and security laws and theories behind those laws. It's going to talk about information management from uh, the U.S. perspective. Second domain limits um, the private sector sector collection and use of data. It's going to talk about things like cross-sector FTIC, privacy protection, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, healthcare regulations such as HIPAA, uh, high tech and GINA, uh, financial record regulations such as Dodd Frank and the FRC, FCRA and CFPB. Um, education regulation, uh, regulations such as FERPA and uh, the telecommunications and marketing um, regulations as well. The third domain, government and court access to the private sector information, um, is going to discuss law enforcement and privacy, um, things like access to um, secured financial data, national security and privacy, talking about the USA, um, focusing on the Patriot Act, civil lit litigation and privacy, talking about things like uh, electronic discovery, uh, which is definitely a hot topic today uh, with spoliation, and, and it's not going to go away. 
the fourth domain about workplace privacy, we know that's a big uh, big deal with PII. Um, it's going to talk about an overview of workplace privacy concept and issues privacy before, during, and after employment. So how that information is used um, throughout the life cycle of somebody's employment at a company. And finally, state privacy laws, uh, federal versus state, marketing laws, financial data, uh, data security laws, data breaches, and, um, and the such. We know that there's been many data breaches uh, today with companies like, uh, like Target and Home Depot. I don't know if, if your credit cards were compromised, but it's definitely a hot topic and a, a certification to be considered. So eligibility requirements. The IAPP requires you to be a member prior to testing. And if you're going to go for the CIPP US examination, you must take the certification foundation exam um, required for all first time certification attend candidates. So what that certification foundation exam is, what it does is assess the understanding of fundamental concepts of privacy and data protection, and it covers uh, common privacy principles and approaches, um, the global data protection models, information security controls, and online privacy protections. And these practice areas are relevant to all privacy professionals, regardless of legal jurisdiction, geographic location, or practice specialization. So they want you to have a foundation before embarking on these um, jurisdictional uh, certification, whether in the US, Europe, or Canada, or the like. So the certification foundation exam is 90 questions. Um, it costs 275 bucks. Scoring is scaled. Uh, CIPP US is uh, 60 multiple choice and it costs um, relatively the same and each question is worth uh, one point. So, and again, the, the, the test is scaled. Um, so there's no uh, a passing, they, I guess they must scale it against uh, during that period of time uh, with testing. And again, you can find more information on the uh, the link at the bottom of the slide. So maintenance. Uh, once you've earned your credential, um, it's good for, you must keep your IAP membership for one year. Um, and you must, you know, or actually, correct me, um, you must be in good standing each year in order to uh, remain a CIPP slash U.S. professional, and you must fulfill at least 10 hours of um, CPE or CEUs per year. So again, it's, it's forcing you to keep up to date on the latest uh, regulations, laws and regulations in the space of um, information security, which, which is definitely important. Next certification we're going to talk about is the project management professional certification. Um, if you're a, a project manager in an organization, you definitely want this certification. Um, I know from experience uh, dealing with uh, people who have gone for this, professionals who have gone for the certification, who are project managers or even consultants, have definitely seen an increase in salary um, because of this, uh, of attaining this this certification. So let's talk briefly about the domains, what you're going to learn um, throughout this, this journey of being a, a, a PMP from uh, Project Management Institute. So initiating the project, you're going to be able to perform project assessments based upon available information and meetings with key stakeholders. I mean, really, who of us today is not a project manager? At, at, no matter what our title is, um, who of us had not dealt with a project or two? 
or, or many or hundreds. Um, you're going to define, you know, the scope of the project, perform key stakeholder analysis using brainstorming, interviewing, and uh, other data gathering techniques. You'll be able to develop a project charter and then be able to obtain approval for a project char charter. So it's really going to give you the, cha the training you need to be a wonderful project management professional. And then again, planning the project, it's going to teach you stuff, things like scheduling, budgeting, roles and responsibilities for stakeholders, um, how to present a project plan to key stakeholders for approval, so how to communicate effective with them, and also how to conduct a, a kickoff meeting. Executing the project, um, talk about things like managing project resources, tasks, approving changes to a product, mentoring and training team members, which is uh, invaluable during any project or, um, or what have you. Monitoring and controlling the project, uh, you'll be able to measure product performance using appropriate tools and techniques, uh, manage change in scope, schedule costs by updating project plans and approving these changes. You'll be able to identify uh, any new risks and response strategies and also communicate project status to stakeholders for feedback to make sure the project still aligns with business needs. And that is so important, that last uh, part, because um, Projects really can lose legs, so to speak, if uh, it deters from that initial goal. So uh, number four, monitoring and controlling the project is definitely a key attribute to this certification. And then finally, closing the project. Um, it'll teach you things like how to close uh, final acceptance to ensure deliverables were actually met so the project was uh, successful. You'll identify lessons learned and also me measure customer satisfaction, satisfaction by uh, asking for feedback. So very basic, um, very basic techniques and information uh, for being a project uh, management professional. So eligibility. The PMI requires a, uh, there's actually two options, a secondary degree, a degree with at least five years project management experience or 7,500 hours um, leading to 35 hours of project management education or a four-year degree, three years experience and 4,500 hours leading to 35 hours of project management education. So in order to be eligible for this certification, you actually have to be a project, dealing with projects uh, today, which I think most, no matter what our, again, no matter what our titles are in our organizations, um, I would definitely um, bet that we qualify for this, this kind of, of certification. About the test, uh, it's 200 questions, multiple choice. Again, there's no essays. Uh, you get four hours to complete it. Um, you can take this test online, so you don't have to go to a Prometric location, so you can take this um, in the privacy of your home. And there's, again, there's two fees. I, I don't know why the online cost is, is more expensive than the Prometric cost, but um, those are the rules. Maintenance, um, a PMP credit holder will need to uh, earn 60 PDUs per three years, so that's not too bad for maintenance. Again, pretty uh, self-explanatory. So next certification, CRM, Certified Records Manager. Um, if you're in the MARA program, um, you're either a CRM already or you're going to, going to pursue this certification. Um, so I, I don't think I have to go into what this certification is um, as it de demonstrates your ability to um, apply and uh, convey your knowledge to upper management clients and other constituents. And um, I don't know if there's anybody on the on the line right now that is a CRM. Um, you know, feel free to type in the chat box or um, 
interject during the as I'm going through these slides because I am not a CRM. Um, I see that Lisa is. That's great. Um, so she could probably attest to uh, a Pat is as well. I should probably let them talk about these domains other than other than me. But I'll move through these uh, quickly. Uh, there's management principles and uh, records management, uh, RIM, records and information uh, management program. Um, the first, what I've heard is that this first domain is very difficult um, just because it is forcing you to be a, a, a real manager, um, to actually develop skills um, that you know, cross paths with human resources, financial considerations, um, creating internal process, uh, policies and procedures, and, and also thinking globally about your your RIM program. The records information creation and use, uh, talk about things like creating records and information, risk assessment, uh, information security, electronic communications, um, and the like. Talk about um, RIM-related business activities, correspondence management, forms management, mail management, facilities, and uh, repo graphics. Record systems and storage and retrieval is going to talk about things like physical and electronic file systems, file conversions, um, record storage facilities and operations. And, and, you know, stopping right here, as you can see, <clears throat> these, you know, we've probably, now that this is the, I think it's the fourth certification we're talking about, a lot of these these certifications overlap in content. And then talking about uh, records appraisal, retention, protection, disposition, talking about um, appraisal, archiving, business continuity, and disaster, uh, recovery planning, and then, you know, getting into the technology, talking about uh, imaging technologies. We talked about that in the, in the CDIA and the CIP. Uh, system architecture, uh, life cycle, upgrading and decommissioning systems, um, and the like. And then finally, what separates this certification from the other ones that we've mentioned is that there's actually a case study, which is a written exam based on uh, fictional case studies to test the application of your knowledge of domains one through five. And so it really forces you to put your knowledge into practice uh, and to think like a records manager or a a subject matter expert and, and definitely the case study is is definitely the most difficult um, as uh, you can see in the, in the in the comments now eligibility requirements um, I think these requirements actually changed recently as well um, need a minimum you don't need a minimum of if you have a bachelor I think you can have one year and if uh, you have a high school or a GED uh, they want you to have three years and applicants must have at least one year of professional records and information management experience and there's an application fee of a hundred bucks It costs a hundred bucks for each domain, so um, a total of six hundred and fifty bucks for the whole exam. Um, passing score for the multiple choice is a seventy, and you must pass parts one through five before being eligible to take part six, and you must take it at a person view testing center. There is maintenance required as well. Uh, the maintenance cycle is five years. Um, requires you to have 100 contact hours approved by educational activity uh, throughout the year, like we've talked about uh, during that five-year period, which is definitely not difficult. Um, attending something like this could probably get you CRM credit. Uh, attending a conference, um, I'm sure your perhaps your Mara. Um, graduate degree could probably give you uh, CEUs as well. And finally, the last certification we're going to talk about 
uh, before we get into the certificates is the information governance professional certification. And it's really, this is the one that I actually went for just because, um, you know, the CIP and the IGP was just more in line with my, uh, my career goals, but it's nothing against the other ones. Um, but the way I think the market is, is turning is people really need strategic thinkers being able to drive out costs and mitigate risk and then get value out of the information in organizations. And, and that's what this certification teaches you. And I know Pat uh, got this certification as well. She was actually one of the inaugural um, in that group, and uh, Lisa as well. So bravo to that. Um, and these domains, uh, again, there are six of them. Uh, managing risk, information risk and compliance. So it's understanding and mitigating information related risk through uh, activities such as researching and monitoring legal, regulatory, and industry specific compliant requirements, uh, creating and monitoring internal policies and procedures. Uh, the information governance professional collaborates with um, key stakeholders to determine uh, risk levels and designs. Uh, developing an IG strategic plan, so it uh, demonstrates an in-depth understanding of organization's business goals, corporate culture, financial resources, and commitments. Um, yeah, I, I saw in the chat there's definitely study materials. I can send some to you as well. There's also a prep, um, an IGP prep course as well through ARMA. Um, I also have a, a, uh, some reference materials as well. Uh, the fourth uh, domain deals with determining, actually the third, let me back up. The third domain, uh, developing an IG framework, um, establishing parameters of organizations, information governance efforts, um, designing program communications and training, and developing audit and enforcement mechanisms to ensure the IG program can be measured, controlled, and improved. And then again, establishing the information governance program, establishing IG business integration and oversight uh, throughout the organization, and then aligning technology and IG frame, framework. So partnering with IT leadership to understand the organization's technology landscape. So really forcing you to deal with other stakeholders other than records management and really um, widening out, so to speak. to assess uh, threats in technology related to records management and information governance. So the eligibility requirements, um, you actually need a four-year degree uh, or some kind of degree, four-year degree or a secondary year degree. If you have a four-year degree, uh, they require a minimum of three years um, of management or leadership experience in uh, one of those following uh, fields. And the experience must be um, in direct oversight of staff, or you can have, you know, a secondary degree with six years experience. So the eligibility requirements are a little more strict than the, the other uh, certifications mentioned. The test is 140 multiple choice questions, uh, in about three hours to so take the exam, and the cost is 600 bucks. So it's a little higher than um, some of the other certifications we've talked about. And again, you can uh, get more resources at that the link on the slide. I'm sure they'll be available um, offline. Talking about maintenance, there's a three-year period. Uh, you required 60 content, contact hours, which is comparable to the ICRM 100 hour. Um, but it's what you, what's unique about this certification is that it requires 10 hours in legal and 10 hours in IT. So again, it's forcing you to widen out into different uh, spaces, into different industries. So that's it for certifications. Now what we're going to do is talk about some 
of the certificate courses. I know we only have about uh, 20 minutes, so um, I will go through these very quickly. Um, AIM certificate courses, uh, they have a business project management uh, certificate course where you'll learn how to map, design, and automate operational process using a combination of strategies, change management, and technologies. And, and, and before I go further, what these cert certificate courses will help you to do, uh, we're going to talk about AIM, ARMA, and then Optismo. Um, these certification courses, if you're not, um, if you don't like to read a ton of books, uh, if you're like me, and, and you really like uh, interactive and uh, online self-paced training, these courses can help you uh, improve on where you're weak in, in any number of the uh, certifications that we've talked about. So the second one is enterprise content management. We talked about that already, uh, so I won't go into great detail with that. IG we talked about as well. Uh, managing records in SharePoint. Um, I've taken that certificate course. It definitely helped me with a SharePoint pro uh, project. Um, taxonomy and metadata, I also took that one as well. Um, helping you in to find a uh, classification structure in SharePoint or another uh, ECM uh, solution. And then uh, electronic records management, I took that one as well, um, where you'll learn best practices and technologies for capturing and managing electronic records. So again, that was very quick. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please please let me know. ARMA also has their own certificate courses. Um, I'm going to focus on one of the new ones is actually the one, one of the new ones is essential of information governance. So that, that one might help you, will definitely help you uh, develop your skills as an IGP. So ARMA actually recommends that information governance certificate course. Um, to help you study for the IGP. And the essentials of RIM uh, certificate course and the essentials of generally accepted record keeping principles is recommended if you are going for your CRM. Now, the other unique certificate course on this, which, which I like as well, is a professional leadership certificate, which is offered free to all ARMA leaders, ARMA um, board members, uh, throughout the the world for free, but you can also uh, purchase it at a cost. And and some of the things that that leadership certificate talks about is how to communicate more effectively, um, effective coaching for leaders, strategies for motivating your team, keys to successful negotiation and conflict resolution, and how to improve your time management skills. So really. De developing yourself as a public speaker and an influencer in your organization because really the fact of the matter is no matter how many certifications you have, um, if, if you can't communicate to your C-level or um, you know, effectively to your, your end users, um, no, certification is going, or no certification is going to teach you how to do that. So that, that certificate course can definitely uh, um, help you in those leadership uh, areas of weakness. And then I, I kind of added this uh, just because I, I'm actually, Optismo is the holding company for the Information Governance Conference, so um, we actually developed our own courses. Uh, you can see on there we talked about uh, the CIP um, certification. If you're looking for a prep course, we actually offer that to help you uh, take that exam and pass it. And again, with the if you take the prep course, you, you, you get a discount off the exam. Um, we also have a communication and public speaking course, which uh, focuses on developing the skill set of a traditional records management professional and, uh, you know, helping you to be able to communicate clearly and speak with conviction. It kind of goes hand in hand with um, hand in hand with the leadership course. 
And also, uh, there's two SharePoint courses, one focused on information management fundamentals, which is a very basic course. You can actually go on the website and take that online. I think the entire course can take you about two hours, and I think it's like a hundred bucks. Um, and the IG records management and SharePoint course goes in a little more detail, talking about you know 2010, 2013, Office 365, and third-party add-ons like uh, like FileTrail and how it can help your your organization utilize SharePoint to its full capabilities. And you do not need to be a SharePoint expert to attend any of these courses, although experts are, are welcome too. And there's also a, an information governance course, um, which, hold on, let me back up. Um, I, I see there's a question, what is SharePoint? Um, that might be a, a topic for another day. I'm, 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 I'm definitely hoping that this it, it's a joke, but, but it's okay. It's definitely, in a nutshell, SharePoint is a very scary product. So you know what? If you don't know what SharePoint is, don't worry about it because uh, <laughs> if, if your organization is not using it, that's okay. It's, you're probably better off. <laughs> um, that information governance course, it's geared to help records management professionals take the leap into the, wor into the world of information governance. So and this course can also be used as a prep course for the IGP exam as well. So after consider this is a lot of information to consider in an hour. I kind of went through it very quickly because I wanted to uh, get through it all, but you're probably overwhelmed right now and you're still asking the question, well, which one do I choose? You know, and you probably haven't decided yet, you know, which certificate is good for you, is best for you, which um, certification is best, which career path should you take, but that's okay. Um, if you ever need any guidance, um, you know, you can definitely reach out to me um, or Pat, obviously she's your uh, instructor and, and mentor, um, but it really depends on your your career goals. Um, you know, if you want to be a records manager, you definitely should should go for that CRM. Or if you're already a records manager, why not go for that CRM or IGP? Um, if you're more technology savvy, um, you know, go for the the CIPP. Security is is definitely very very hot today. So again, I mean, uh, thank you for attending. I wanted to leave at least 10 minutes for for questions. Again, we only scratched the surface with these six uh, certifications that we, we discussed today. Uh, my contact information, my email, phone, and my, my Twitter handle where I'm pretty active. Uh, feel free to connect with me, uh, to bounce questions off me. Uh, I'm always available and, and I'm definitely a, uh, you know, a certification, certificate course geek. Um, I, I just like playing around with, with different certifications and, you know, I'm, I'm definitely interested in, in advancing my career and learning things from people like you. And, and you know, I want to turn it over to question, turn it over to Pat for, uh, to see if there's any questions. Oh, thanks so much. There was a lot of information there to cover. Uh, does anybody have questions on any particular certification or do any of you have certifications already? I see a couple saying something. Uh, where do we find? Each one is different. Uh, you have to find out what certification you're going for or certificate. And at the site where they explain what it's all about, they also usually have links to uh, study. Uh, if you are interested in the CRM, the ICRM, Institute of Certified Records Managers, has a site and they have a free handbook uh, that you can use. And uh, it's the same for certified archivists. We haven't talked about that, but we 
will, at a future uh, uh, presentation, but I know that they have a handbook as well. Uh, and then uh, the ARMA website is a really good place for the IGP. Uh, AIM provides materials for their certification, and so those are the places you're going to have to decide what you want and then look. Um, Oh, a SharePoint for RIM course and could pay 100 more to take the ARMA certificate exam. Oh, that's a good good way to do it. Um, you can take all five parts of that six-part exam at once. I did that and got them all out of the way. And then you have to have all five passed before you can take that case study. So, or unless it's been changed. So it actually took two sittings to complete the CRM exam. The others that I have, it was one sitting. Yep. Uh, local chapters do study materials sometimes. We used to purchase them and loan them out. Also have study uh, groups um, that uh, might be able to conduct that online. I know some people also charge to run study groups. I don't think you need that. I think you just need to maybe get with an ARMA chapter that's running something like that. Any questions for Jim? I know we never mind when we're done early. Uh, Jim, I want to thank you for offering uh, to uh, answer questions for them offline. So grab his email if you don't have it. Uh, also, um, somebody asked if you would share your slides. If we do that, I usually do that as a PDF, but I'm not sure if you want that. So you can think about it. Uh, and then that was Rebecca. And uh, I think that it, uh, as far as uh, I have notes in the uh, chat area. Yeah, no problem. Um, you feel free to do what you want with the slides. Um, I'll okay, I'll that. turn them into a PDF. I'll, I'll turn them into a PDF and then I'll link them on the site next to his name uh, where you have the link to get in today. We'll post them there. It'll be easier for you to get them that way and it'll be a PDF version. Okay, thank, well, I like that. It was worth it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much, Jim. I'm going to turn off the recording. We really appreciate you being here uh, with us today, taking time from your busy schedule.